Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, multiple X, drive to work in traffic example. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get down to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab blank worksheets so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We're considering a binomial distribution once again with a scenario that might not be as intuitive as some of the prior scenarios, thinking about driving to work and whether we're going to be caught in traffic or not. Notice we're not asking how much traffic there might be. We're saying either we're gonna be in traffic or not in traffic. Therefore, we have that kind of binomial type of situation. We're defining success then as not having traffic and uh, a fail as basically being in traffic. So we'll say drives to work. This is gonna be in, we're gonna say five as if five days a week we're driving to work. And then we've got the probability of success we're going to say is only 12% probability of success, success being defined as no traffic. And then X is the number of times uh, no traffic out of five. So we're looking for three times, three days out of five with uh, no traffic. And that's what we'll be looking for here. And then we'll graph this information and we'll add some, uh, the new step being that we're not looking for one point but asking questions of X being say greater than two or greater than uh, or equal to one and so on and so forth. And we'll take a look at a couple different ways that we can get to the answers of these types of questions down below. All right, let's go to the blank tab and get to work here. We're gonna select the entire worksheet, formatting the worksheet as we do every time, selecting the triangle to do so, right click in the area, formatting the cells. Let's go to the currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign to start off with and no decimals to start off with. Okay, I'm gonna make the whole thing bold to home tab, font group, and bolden the entire thing. All right, so then we'll put our conditions up top. Once again, we're gonna say that n is gonna be equal to the number of fixed trials, which is gonna be equal to drives to work. And I'll set n to be, we're gonna double click on a, and I'm gonna set n to be five, five drives to work. P is gonna equal the prob for probability of success meaning, and success is defined as no traffic. The probability of no traffic is sadly only 12%. It's pretty sad. Home tab, number group, we gotta, we gotta find a job closer to home or something. It's getting, this is driving me crazy. X is gonna be equal to the number of times no uh, traffic traffic out of uh, five. So if we're looking for the number of times, we can say three. So uh, the number of times no traffic, three out of five, three out of five days driving to work, we'll say we have no traffic. I'm gonna put some borders around that. That's our conditions, uh, home tab, font group, and then we can border it like so. 
Okay, so then I'm going, we could plot this out. We can simply plot it out if we so choose. If I'm asking that one singular question, I can then use my binomial formula to answer it. I could say, all right, well, this is going to be equal to the binome dot dist. And I'll show each of these ones that we can use. But first, let's just take a look at the binome dot dist dot range because it's the more flexible and latest and greatest one. So the number of trials we're going to say is five comma. The probability is 12% per trial comma. And uh, the numbers, we just have one at this point is going to be the number three. Now, this formula allows us to have multiple X's and that's why it's a little bit more flexible. And so we'll take a more of a deep look in that in a second. So that's going to be that one. And let's go ahead and home tab, number group, percentify it, add some decimals. So the likelihood being uh, 1.34. I'm going to say this equals this. And let's do it again with the other formula. This equals binome, binome dot dist. This time we'll use this top one. The still, you know, it looks you know, it's fairly current, but not the latest and greatest one, right? And so we'll look at the two of them. The numbers is going to be uh, uh, this and then comma. The number of trials is the five and the probability is 12. And then this one has the cumulative, which you'll remember if you went through the the questions that we looked at for the Poisson distribution. We'll talk more about this later in a second here. But in this case, I don't want it to be cumulative. I want to type in false or I can put a zero instead of typing in false. And if I format this the same way, home tab, format painter, we get the 1.34. Now, obviously, we can plot this as well as we've seen in the past. So I'm going to go to column D to do that and say I have X and P of X, let's say, making this black and white home tab font group black, white. Let's center it as well. And then I'm going to enter our X's. I'm going to do it in a fancy way. So instead of just saying one, two, three, four, five, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to say equals sequence. And we're going to say that the rows that we want are going to be five plus zero, so plus one. So we'll have six of them, zero through five, comma, no columns, so two commas. The start point is going to be zero and close it up. And that gives us our, our fancy spill array numbering that out, which could then change if I change this number. So fanciness happening here, although it does make it difficult to put a table in it. So there's pros and cons to it. We're going to do our binome. I'm going to do the fancy binome with the dot range, the latest and greatest one. And we'll say that this is going to be the trials are going to be five. I'll select F4 on the keyboard to absolute reference that so I can copy it down. Comma, the probability is 12 F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the two so I can copy it down without moving that down relative comma and the numbers is going to be this range and so this will be a spill array and I can just say enter and it spills that down I select these items home tab numbers percentify add a couple decimals and there we have it so this is the one that we were looking for when we looked for that just one number but now we can see everything from zero uh, to five. So the likelihood of having zero out of five uh, traffic when driving to work uh, is is uh, 52.77, zero successes, that is, meaning we have zero times that we go to work and there's no traffic. One time that we go to work and there's no traffic, that glorious day, one out of five, uh, 35.98, and then two times uh, 9.81 and to have five times with no traffic, given the fact that there's traffic all the time, and the likelihood is 12% each time to have tra traffic is still 
less than <laughs> less than 0.01 percent so there it is get used to the traffic we've got our audio books on you know our headphone you know so we're blasting our audio books and learning stuff in the car so it's okay i like the traffic i like it because that's my that's my time but in any case i'm going to then insert here we're going to go charts and let's add uh, a chart this time let's add this kind of chart just to switch things up a bit so we'll say let's add this one and so there we have it and I'll pull this over and I'll change this so I can get a zero down here as we normally do selecting the data I want to pick up my own X so it picks up the zero to five and okay okay and there we have plotted our data and of course it's somewhat flexible so if we changed some of our our information over here to like what if this was 30 or something like that you could see the changes in the graph let's bring it back to 12. okay so now we're going to ask questions such as let's go down here and say uh uh let's say we ask questions of um of p well let's just call it p of x and then i'll make this a header area let's pull it down one let's put it down here make up your mind man driving me cr okay home tab font group black white and let's say that we now want p uh x to be equal to two so so that one's a straightforward one so instead of three we can have it equal to two and i can see you know the outcome up top but of course we can calculate it multiple different ways so let's just do that one a couple different ways now so we can see some of the different calculations we can use so one is our the same one we did before we can say this is going to be the binome dot disk dot range the latest and greatest one which is going to be the number of trials five comma the probability per trial 12 comma the numbers now i'm just going to type in two and enter let's make this format painted home tab numbers dollar sign decimals there we have it matching out to that 9.81 i'm going to pull this to the right a little bit now i could use my other formula this is this is going to be equal to binome dot dist not range but just dot dist and this one it still could be kind of useful because it's similar it doesn't use the arrays and it's similar to what we saw with the poisson so so you so we have the numbers then the numbers are going to be uh two comma the trials are going to be five comma the probability is going to be 12 and then you've got this cumulative or non-cumulative in this case we don't want it to be cumulative so we can type in false or put a zero and there it is let's format paint this over home tab uh, format painter and put that here now another way that you can you can do this is you can actually if you use the the latest and greatest formula you might try to define the lower and upper of the range and then use basically bins uh, or use the binome and you can kind of copy the binome down in a relative formula so we'll take a look at that as we go in this case it would just be the lower and the upper would be two and two because uh but but we'll you look at some different ones right here so home tab font group black white let's uh center it and so this would be equal to i'm going to do this again binome binome dot disk dot range and now i'm going to say that the trials are going to be five and i'll say f4 on the keyboard so i can copy it down comma the probability is 12 f4 on the keyboard so i can copy it down and then comma and then the numbers are going to be uh the numbers are going to be and i'm going to pick up the range now of these two 
And so that's what's a little bit different with this formula. And I can hit enter and I'm going to make that a percent home tab number group, percentify it, and then open that up. So let's do another one, a little bit trickier one. I'm going to say this is going to be P of uh, is going to be less than or equal to two. So if P is going to be less than or equal to two, one way I can do it, I could, I could, these are the two binome ways that I can do it. Uh, let's add one more area. I'm going to take this and drag it to the right. And I'm going to pull this a little bit over here. And then I can also use my basically the sum function. This would be equal to this one up top, right? I could do it that way. And I can do this. And so we could say, all right, if I was to do that, let's first define our ranges here. So we're going to say this is greater than or equal to two. So the lower range then is going all the way down to zero. The upper range includes the number two. There's our upper range. So if I was to sum this up, one way I can do this is just to say, well, this is going to be the sum of zero down to two. Enter and home tab numbers percentify add some decimals we can use the fancy formula equals the binome dot dist dot range and this one is more versatile but it's a little bit confusing because it's a little bit different than what we saw with the poisson when we're doing something like this right so we can say okay the trials are going to be the number of trials is five comma probability is 12 comma and now i have these two numbers i don't have that cumulative argument so this i can pick up both of these of the zero and then comma and then the two instead of doing the cumulative thing and that if i go home tab number percentify add some decimal we get to the same result now, if I used the older formula, which is similar to what we had with Poisson with a cumulative component, note what we have to do. We have to say, okay, this is going to sum everything up uh, to a certain point. Now, if I'm just summing up to the number two, the cumulative works good. Where it runs into problems if, is if I'm trying to find something like in the middle, just these two numbers. So, so the cumulative formula might be even easier with the binome, the old binome, uh, binome.dist, which would be equal to the number, uh, the number that we want now is two. So I can say, I might put this two, comma, the number of trials is gonna be five, and then comma, the probability is 12, and then comma. Now this time we want it to be cumulative, because we want everything up to and including two. So therefore, I'm going to say true, or I can put a one for cumulative and enter, and we should get it the same thing there. Now let's imagine we have one where P is going to be uh, X is less than or equal to one. So we have a similar kind of process. I can say, okay, what's my lower limit? It's going to be less than one. So it goes all the way down to zero again. And then it's going to be less than or equal to one. So I'm going to include one as the upper limit. So I could say, all right, that's going to be equals to the sum of zero and one. Format paint, home tab, number, percent. Not format paint, I'm going to percentify it. And then I could say, all right, and then I'm going to do it this way equals the binome.dist.range tab and the trials are going to be five comma the probability is 12 comma and then the numbers i have two of them this lower and this as the upper and bracket it up close it out percentify add the decimals there we have it. If I use the old one, again, it's even a little easier maybe with the old one in this case. Binome.dist is going to be the numbers are going to be uh, the upper one, the upper limit. The trials are going to be five and the probability is 12. And then this one, I want it to be cumulative again, going up to that point. Therefore, I can put in a true or type uh, one enter 
and percentify add some decimals so there we have that one let's add let's do another one a little bit more complex we're going to say p x is greater than uh or equal to two okay so if it's greater than or equal to two then that means that uh the upper limit goes all the way as high as it can go which is up to five in our case and the lower limit is including two because it has or equal to so the lower limit is two that it's going to be including all right so i can do it this way equals the sum of everything from two on up to five percentify add decimals or i can say equals the the binome dot dis dot range and i'm going to say the number of trials is five comma probability 12 comma and then the numbers i can say is this two comma and then this five and then close it up and enter and percentify add and then i can use the old one and the old one gets a little bit more complex now because now I only have that cumulative component. So what I have to do is take everything up to five, right? And then I've got to subtract out everything up to the, so I have to, I have to take, take everything up to five and then subtract everything up to, but not including the two, right? So I got to take this whole thing minus this. So I could do that. I could say, okay, well, that's going to be equal to the binome Di dot dist and i'm going to say the number that we want is the upper limit of five and then comma trials are five comma probability is 12 and then comma cumulative therefore one brackets minus binome dot dist and then we want the 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 lower limit which i have here as two but I have to say two minus one because I don't want to take the cumulative up to two. I want to take the cumulative up to one and then comma, the trials are five comma, the probability is 12 comma. We want it to be cumulative, which is one. And so you can see this is why the newer formula, although kind of more complicated in some ways to kind of figure out how that last bit works with the two X's is is actually a lot nicer when you have to do something like this, right? And so I can then say percent adding some decimals. Let's do another one. We're going to say P X is greater than uh, two. So we'll say X is greater than two, not equal this time. So if we, if we do that, that it's greater than two. So the upper limit is five, but now it's not including two. So we have to say the lower, the lower part is going to go down to uh, less than it's going to be going from three to up to five, right? So if we do this, we can say, okay, this is going to be the sum then of three up to five percentify add a couple decimals, or we can say this is going to be equal to the binome binome dot dist dot range of trials five comma probability is going to be 12 comma numbers and then i can say this is going to be the three comma five that we have our buckets and percentify add decimals so or i can do it this way and this way i have to take everything up to five minus everything uh, everything up to two because I don't want to subtract out what is in what's included in that three there. So I got to take that three minus one uh, to get to the two in our case. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the binome dot dist. The number is going to be five comma trials is going to be five comma probability is going to be 12 comma it needs to be cumulative so a one close it up minus binome dot dist number is going to be that three which you can't see but it's right there but i have to subtract one so it gets down to the two and then comma 
the trials are going to be 5, comma, the probability is 12, comma, it needs to be cumulative, therefore a 1, and close it up. So you can see that's a pretty tedious formula, but uh, so th that's why the other one's a little bit faster. Now notice that with this new formula also, if I delete this bit right here, I can copy this down uh, even faster, which is nice. So let's do this one again. And I'm just going to try to do all of it now that I have my upper and lower limits with one spill function. So super fancy equals binome.dist.range again. And we're going to say that the trials are going to be five. I'm going to select F4, making it absolute. I'm going to say comma. And then the probability is 12. Same thing we've done before, absolute. So I can spill it down without a problem, comma. And then here's where we have this argument where we were putting the top, upper, and lower ranges. So this time, I'm going to select this whole array for the lower and then comma. And I'm going to select this entire array for the upper and it should spill out for us, which is super fancy. So we're going to say, okay, enter and it spills it down. Let's select these three and number group percentify and add some decimals. And hopefully we got the same results for, for those methods. And so, so there we have it. So just a, you know, a couple different ways that you can see that formula. So I'm going to make this blue and bordered as we normally do. If you don't have that blue, it's in the color wheel right there. Make this blue and bordered. I'll make this blue and bordered. Oh, I made it blue and white instead of bordered. This shouldn't be white. I can't see it, man. All right, blue and bordered. And then let's make this black and white or just all I need is black because there's no white there. Let's make this blue and bordered. Let's make this blue and bordered. And we might be able to thin this up a bit, get everything fitting nice and tight in here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's do a spell checky. Uh, bean, by no, I'll ignore. By no means do I need to do that. By no means. You mean there's actually two means because there's binome, binome means, by no means, by no means. Okay, so that looks pretty good.